Hey guys, Chris Brandt here. All right, so what we're gonna show you today is just a little piece of what we go through with each and every group on their first day of our riders meeting. And basically what we're doing is going over the basics that you need to have with you in the backcountry to slay mountain riding. So check it out. Anyone know what the first one is? Bobby? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, <what's up? laughs> and it's like, dude, you're stuck again, come on. <laughs> No, 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 that's not what it is. It is a finger on the brake, okay? Today, especially, what is going to move your snowmobile and what uh, is this, this little button right over here, okay? The go button. But you have to be in control and the finger on the brake allows you to be more aggressive with the gas and yet be in control with the brake. Even when it's deep like this, riding closed fisted, what happens is that you, you lose the time of when you should have gotten back into control, okay? So being more aggressive here, but being ready to be aggressive here. And the brake isn't necessarily to stop you, it's to get you to back, back in control, okay? So as we're rolling around and you guys are riding here and I'm flipping you off, I'm, and it's funny, they're like, <laughs> oh yeah, finger on the brake, okay? I use my middle finger, some people use their pointer too, I don't care, something needs to be on the brake. I want it to feel uncomfortable when you don't have a finger on the brake. And the only way to do that is to make it your habit. Because in pressure situations, you guys will revert back to what you know, which could be potentially wrong, instead of what we're trying to teach you, okay? So, being here and here and eyes up is our second hand signal. Eyes up, get those eyes up. Especially today, and we're gonna have trenches, we're gonna have deep snow, and so we have to be ready and prepared to have a plan B. You can't have a plan B when you're staring right there. All you're doing is reacting to what's in front of you and then you drive up to your buddy who's stuck and then you get stuck. Oh, what the heck? I love that when I, get, when I you know, we're crying, we're CSI investigators when we come and we get, I'm like, huh, so what happened here? And I already know, right? Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I hit a trench right there and then, uh, well, where's your plan B? Well, I didn't really have one, okay? The key to a plan B is A, have one, but B, initiating plan B early so we can carry momentum, okay? If you go until the very last minute and then you get almost stuck and turned down, you turn down on two skis and here I go by you on edge because I plan B early, carry momentum, and I'm going up the hill. Our goal is to always get up, right? If we wanted to go downhill, we would own a skidoo. Sorry, <laughs> okay? I expect it all day today. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with, with that being said, we always have an agenda, a direction, where we're going. And mostly that is up, right? We're trying to get to the top of something. So I don't expect you guys to ride behind me in this little snake line, right? It's sometimes it's good to use the trench. Sometimes it's better to get out and, and especially when we've got guys stuck, which is gonna happen a lot. We got guys stuck all over the place. Go around, okay? Go around get up to our little spot, we'll high five each other, we'll turn around, go get everybody unstuck, gather the group, move over 50 yards and do it again, okay? It's gonna be that type of day, it's gonna be fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so uh, those are the two hand signals, okay? Eyes up, finger on the brake. Okay, so um, I will go through this and it'll be interesting, I don't know if we'll get to work on this, but um, so does everybody know what being on edge is? on edge, one ski, right? Okay, so the whole reason that we're on edge is to, because if we're on two skis and the terrain is going downhill, which way would we go? Downhill, we're going down. We're going in the creek, we're running into the tree, we're sliding into our buddy. So the whole thing of being on edge, it gives us, yeah, that sled is light. She's my mod, she's my girl. Bobby, you wanna race? That's a stalker, right? That's a stalker. <laughs> all right, all right. So, okay, so when we're on edge, we now have three options. We can go up, across, or down. When we're on two skis, downhill, we're going down, okay? So it's so important, especially on today, is to have options, okay? So, and more importantly, when we stop on that side hill, on edge, a lot of guys get stuck in the back seat a little bit and with that nose up. We just eliminated our options again. When you're on edge, nose up, it, the sled only has the option of going up. So you'll see when we come up, 
get on edge, keep rotating, and get that front end down, just a little bit, because then it gives us the option of going up, across, or down. Now, to get on edge, there's three very simple things to do at once. Unfortunately, most people can't even do two things at once. So I'm asking you to do three. Counter steer, wrong foot forward. Everyone know what wrong foot forward is, right? Right foot on the left running board, left foot on the right running board, okay? So wrong foot forward, we got our finger on the brake, and then the most important thing that moves the sled is not us. Here's what I see a lot. Okay, okay, Chris said one, two, three. One, two, and ah! And then give it throttle, and then oh boy! It's very enjoyable. <laughs> when we have our phone out watching you, you're probably doing something not right. Okay, so three things at once. Counter steer, wrong foot forward, and move the sled with this. One, two, and on three, we pull with the gas. Okay, and then boom, right back into control with the brake. Because the gas, aggressive. Now we just went from being, having no options going downhill to having three options up, across, or down. So remember the, that the timing is everything there. One, two, three, pull the sled up. Okay, so that brings us to position on the snowmobile. There's only two. Neutral, which we're gonna be in neutral a lot today. Because if you get wrong foot forward in deep snow, it, the sled is doing this constantly, okay? Neutral allows us to, we're going down the trail, and when we're in the open meadow, just doing pow turns, okay? That's neutral. Or wrong foot forward. The position I do not want to see you guys on is what we call the tightrope where you're side hilling with two feet on the running board, relying 100% on the throttle. You know what we'll, what we'll be doing? Fast. Recording. <laughs> okay, it's coming. Because you're relying 100% on speed, right? So when you rely on speed to side hill, it will bite you 100%. Because eventually you're going to lose that edge, go down into the trees, and then it's, then, then it's a mess. Side hilling is a walking pace, guys. Even today, even when it's deep, we might be pinned wide open side hilling, but it's still a walking pace, right? The general rule is this, slow enough to be in control, fast enough not to be stuck, okay? And that's called momentum. And momentum it can be two miles an hour or momentum could be 20 miles an hour. It's all dependent on the situation. But just remember that today, okay? If you're, if you're bouncing back and forth on the sled, neutral, wrong foot forward, for one, you're gonna wear yourself out a little bit. And two, like today, the key is going to be neutral, but the only way you can ride neutral and be in control is to have those eyes far forward, anticipating what's in front of you, instead of eyes down, only reacting to what you see in front of you, okay? Anticipate, have a plan B, initiate plan B early, allows you to be neutral, okay? Use that throttle today. When you get stuck, and you'll notice I didn't say if, when you get stuck, you have one opportunity at the snow underneath you, only one. When you kind of half-ass it and only go half-throttle, puts those running boards down onto the snow, spins the track, and then we're stuck, okay? And then me, I'm not, actually, I don't pull skis anymore, I, I drive. Um, I'll let, I'll, especially the guys with the loud cans. Oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead and on that right side, right there. <laughs> Should you be on the charger? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, um, when you get stuck and you're waving your hands at me standing on your snowmobile, I will drive right by. Get your butt off your sled, pack the snow underneath your running board, pack the snow out of the front. One of us guys will come over, quick ski tug, and we're out. Be proactive in that, okay? I'm not the one who got stuck, you did. Do some work, okay? That'll teach you not to get stuck next time. When we do get stuck though, guys, we, we don't throw our helmets down, kick the snowmobile, Blame it on the trench, the buddy, the log, the whatever. You guys made the mistake, right? So we, we fix it. We analyze what we did and we fix it. If we keep making the same mistake over and over expecting a different result, that is the definition of insane. insane. We're being insane out there. <laughs> Quit being insane, all right? If you think that it's magically going to go when you're stuck straight up and down, that is insane to me, okay? So all of those things we'll be working on today. And we cover a lot right here in this meeting, um, but then we'll all talk about it again, circumstantial when we're sitting there straight up and down and I'm like, remember that plan B we were talking about? We might want to incorporate that on the next one. <coughs> okay. Um, so 
Uh, one other thing. So, guys, picture this running board as a teeter-totter, okay? The further forward we are, we're putting pressure on the ski, and that is wanting the sled to fall down, potentially, okay, when we're going across the hill. Vice versa, if we get too far back and we're going across the hill, what happens? Wash out, wash out, wash out, okay? So, there's a fine balance, and we're constantly moving our weight forward and backward as the terrain changes and what the situations we're getting into. For me personally, I'm a smaller dude. I ride rider back to keep the front end light and then control the front end up or down with the counter steer, okay? So if I'm riding back and I'm on a steep hill, what's it gonna wanna do? It's gonna wanna keep going up, right? So the way I counteract that is if I'm on edge, I counter steer and that drops the front end. Okay, and vice versa, if I want to take the front end up, I turn into the hill when I'm on edge and I go up. One big mistake that we see a lot it, uh, when side hailing and just getting comfortable on edge is we have bad body posture. And what I'm talking about is a lot of guys when they're first starting to learn the wrong foot forward in side hailing is they're side hailing like this. And my shoulders and hips are square looking down, not even looking where I need to go. Right? And so their, their foot is parallel, knee stuck to the seat, side hilling like this. This does absolutely nothing. The whole reason, guys, that we do wrong foot forward is to get our body away from the center line of this, this snowmobile. We are the fulcrum that holds it up. Okay? So we put our foot at an angle on the running board, not parallel. When you get stuck here, you're screwed. Angle, and then watch this. So when I'm at an angle, look where my shoulders and hips are now. I'm going that way. I'm not side hilling this way. I'm side hilling this way, okay? And then look at this. To hold the sled up, I'm not doing anything. So this is, this is the definition of being on edge. What we see a lot is guys barely on edge. And when you're barely on edge, uh-oh, uh-oh, right? Now, now the sled has leverage on me. So when the sled has leverage on you, you will lose, okay? So. Be on edge more than you think. We rarely see people lose edge into the hill, but we see everybody lose it that way, right? Yeah, big time, right? And so that's, that's either your foot position is too far forward, your body weight is over here, instead of, and the sled, okay, so this is the statement that I want you guys to take with you forever the rest of your snowmobile career. The snowmobile is only doing exactly what you tell it to do. It doesn't have a mind of its own. So when it loses edge, you told it to lose edge. When it washed out, you told it to wash out. When it hit the tree, ended up in the creek, all of that stuff, it's not doing it. You did it. So what do we need to do to make it not do that? That's my goal as a rider every single day I ride, is for me to ride the sled, not the sled to ride me. And that's one thing that we learn riding six days a week is to keep perfecting the technique to make it easier for us to ride. And that's what we're gonna be teaching you guys over the next two and three days. Cool? Awesome. So I got a couple more things to cover here. Um, uh, so we talked about having a plan B, initiating it, initiating it early, don't be afraid uh, to pick your own line. One thing that we also have, guys, is, so my group, I'm gonna have six dudes. All right, so that's how easy it is. Basically, counter steer, eyes up, finger on the brake, right? <laughs> Stay in control. Um, I know it sounds really easy, but when we get all these guys up on the hill, it's a lot different. So hopefully you guys come and join us here at Brant's Backcountry Adventure, and remember, connect with us, ride with us, and eat some good food with us.